Now, stress and anxiety is it's an interesting concept in a modern world. If you think about how far we've come in 500 years, our minds and bodies have not evolved or developed or changed in that period. They haven't changed in you know potentially thousands of years in any meaningful way, but the world around us has changed. So they're considered mechanisms which are out of era. And so this stress and anxiety, it is something which is having to contend in a really new world. And especially for young people, you even just go back a few generations. You look at the mechanisms for society and family and child rearing and how they're changing so dramatically. So we need new ways to understand stress and anxiety. We're doing our best. I think as a society, you know, we've tried to normalize mental health as much as possible, but there does tend to be a bit of a pendulum effect that I speak about with change. We do tend to sometimes go too far before it starts to come back and tries to start to settle somewhere which makes sense. Go back 50 years, mental health uh, and its awareness and the way that we treated it and saw it was terrible. And now what's happening is it's probably becoming too much of a focus. They're starting to look at it and see a hyperfixation of it at schools and in education and trying to normalize it is actually creating issues around mental health and well-being. And there's a, a shift coming where we're starting to talk less about mental health, less about uh, you know, mental illness, and talk more about mental fitness and mental strength. So this idea of resilience is central to all of that. Resilience is, is not an objective to try and alleviate anxiety. Resilience is a, is a mechanism to try and create strength. And that's, that's a far more hopeful outlook, I think. And it was one of the reasons I, I, I moved away from the fitness industry. Uh, the, the focus tends to be on just getting people to okay. So, okay, well, let's deal with illness, and then once they're okay, away they go. But you have to ask the question in the first place, why did people become mentally ill? How could we have prevented that in the first place?